Yeah, hi, Alex. Okay. How are you? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome back to BCVI. Uh, we have a, a, a very interesting uh, afternoon uh, schedule for you. As, uh, as the real world will have it, one of our patients had a bit of a problem. Uh, uh, we wound up having to cancel in this next session. We'll, um, we'll talk to you a little bit more about that. Uh, Jim Beninati will fill you in on that uh, in just a moment. Um, uh, to my right is Dr. Uh, Jerry Gibbs, uh, one of our fellows, who's going to uh, give you the presentation on this patient. Great. Uh, this is an 88-year-old man who uh, actually returned for routine follow-up imaging at Baptist Cardiac and Vascular Institute. He was initially referred to us in, 19, in sorry, 2005 with an outside uh, diagnosis of critical stenosis, but upon evaluation by us at the Institute, we're found to only have 60 to 79 percent stenosis and sent to us on medical therapy. He returned in January for follow-up. His past medical history has a significant peripheral vascular disease history, status post bilateral femoral popliteal bypass grafts about 15 years ago. He also has a history of uh, coronary artery disease with ischemic cardiomyopathy, status post cabbage, and uh, defibrillator placement, and a history of hypothyroidism. He denies any tobacco and only drinks about one glass of wine with dinner occasionally. His uh, meds are significant for Zocor, Lasix, Coreg, Amiodarone, and Synthroid. He was recently started on Aspen and Plavix on the 15th of this month. On physical exam, his neurologic exam was non-focal. The only thing significant was that he had uh, carotid breweries, which could be heard on physical exam. Otherwise, it was unremarkable. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, these are images from uh, carotid duplex imaging performed one year apart. The top one was from January 2008. As you can see, the uh, diastolic velocity significantly increased from about 83 to about 131. And that's what prompted us to evaluate him further. Um, also, his systolic velocity increased significantly as well. Uh, next slide. These are images from the duplex, which just show the, the characteristic of the plaque. It's very hypochoic on these images, and you can see the degree of narrowing in the internal carotid artery. Uh, next slide, please. And again, the, the elevated velocities within this area of stenosis as well demonstrated. We, uh, he underwent, uh, next slide, please. Uh, imaging with CT, and this is a sagittal reconstruction with contrast, and again shows the caliber of stenosis in the right internal carotid artery, in addition to the caliber of the plaque. As you can see, there's a mixture of both calcified and non-calcified soft plaque regarding the stenosis. Uh, next slide. And this is just a MIP reconstruction, again, demonstrating the degree of stenosis. Uh, next slide, please. Our plan with him is we're going to do carotid angiography and, and stent placement within his right internal carotid artery. Furthermore, he's going to be enrolled in a clinical trial following stent placement. OK, thank you very much, Jerry. I, I want to introduce, uh, I mentioned Dr. Uh, Jim Beninati, who we met earlier and uh, is going to be working with us here, and Dr. Mark Woolley is in the lab, uh, and he's uh, going to be helping us uh, do some analysis here. So we heard a lot this morning about, um, about plaque nature and how it might affect non-coronary circulation, particularly the issue of vulnerable plaque. Mark's going to be presenting.